tritone. And you could read all of these. They're all on uh, on the web. Pretty easy to find. Yes. Um, Crito, by the way, is the root word for critic, critical thinking, right? So you think of this as a critical thinking course. Crito, was there a real character named Crito, or did they just give him that name because the part he plays in the dialogue is to be critical of Socrates? Because Socrates clearly wants to stay and let them kill him. Crito arrives early in the morning so that he could basically convince Socrates to leave. He's already bribed the guards. They have everything all set up. He could just leave with him and go to another town. Um, and he's wealthy enough that he's pretty much paid for the whole trip and everything, right? So he's got everything all set up. Let's go. Um, and uh, uh, after he gives his arguments uh, for why Socrates ought to go, Socrates argues back that no, Athens, even though the trial has been unjust as far as he's concerned, has concluded that he ought to be uh, uh, executed, and it would be wrong of him, unjust of him, to ignore the decision of Athens. Athens is his mother. And she's the town that he's always lived in. He's only uh, occasionally left the town, and those were for battles when he was fighting for Athens. Um, and so uh, he owes everything. He owes his life to Athens. There's some other things involved too. Uh, if he fled, uh, his family would be destitute. Uh, but if they kill him, the city owes the family a living. So basically his family would, would uh, um, be taken care of if he's executed. Plus he's already, what, how old? 79, I think? Or 16, he's 70, he's old. He thinks he's old. Um, and I don't know if he has any aches and pains, but maybe he does. But in any case, he's like not really up for travel. He's not really up for going away. Uh, he's just gonna let death come. And he argues that uh, at his age, it'd be silly for him to worry about dying. Personally, I'm older than he was, and I think hey, if, you know, it's time to die, I'm going to, you know, rage into the night, you know, how that poem goes, you know, because you know, I've got way too much stuff to do. It's, it's too much fun. However, that's his basic argument. In fact, I went this morning just for fun to chat GPT. I checked. I asked. I asked ChatGPT. It's funny how they give you all the things in a session at once. So here's here's what ChatGPT ChatGPT gave me this morning. Uh, in response to what is a summary of Plato's dialogue, the Crito. And can you see that? It's good enough. Any of you using ChatGPT, by the way? Not yet? Better get on the stick, guys. You're going to be behind, you know? No? It's a tool. You gotta learn how to use all the tools that'll be available to you or you're gonna let be left in the dust, right? Don't you think? Or are you trying to save the the ecosystem? I understand that using this is actually burning up all kinds of fuel in order to run the this the computer servers wherever they are. I don't know. I don't I have no clue where they are or anything. Uh, but in any case, uh, this summary is the summary that I, you know, uh, how did I do? Did I give you a good enough summary of this? His wealthy friend Crito, 
Crito's arguments. There you go. Socrates' response, I could care less what other people think, you know, etc. Uh, and besides, the right thing for me to do is what my society says I should do. The voice of the laws. Athens. Living in Athens, he has implicitly agreed to abide by its laws. Even if they result in an unjust outcome. He still will do it. Uh, you might argue that, hey, you know, we have a democracy here. We vote for the people uh, that we want. Um, they don't get elected. Somebody else gets elected. And, you know, if I accept living here, I ought to accept the voice of the, the majority or however it's counted so that those are the legitimate uh, office holders for whatever those positions were, right? So that's part of the deal. You know, if we're going to live here, we have to follow the rules, even if we don't think the decision, the decision that people made was really the best one, right? So he's kind of giving that same basic argument. Um, so it's better to suffer wrong than to commit wrong. That's kind of an interesting one. So, any questions about the Crito? Did you have a chance to read it? My question to you, this is a quiz question, but seriously, why would you read it now when you could just ask ChatGPT and give you a quick summary? Is it worth it? So you can Still. do it yourself. You can read it and you can help understand on your own. ChatGPT just summarized it for me, but what the course is supposed to help you do is learn how to read the original text and come up with your own interpretation, right? So I'm, I'm using a source, a, a tool here that automatically saves me the trouble of going to philosophy, basically, right? Um, and yet, I think there is a difference when you're reading it for yourself. For one thing, it takes longer. It also is good exercise. We were talking earlier about languages, why I still read and so on in French, Russian, German. Try to, I'm still trying to learn Spanish. You know, all that stuff. Why? Why would you do that? Well, I'm not a translator for the army anymore. It's just for fun, really, for me, right? Um, but also because it's supposed to be good for my brain to actually do this kind of mental exercise. Reading is mental exercise. It's probably better for your brain for you to read the original texts. Although today you also have this tool that you could use. One of these days you'll probably have a chip in your head. Elon Musk is making these and has implanted them in several people, right? I don't know how this is working, right? But I, you know, years ago I saw a movie uh, it wasn't a movie, but it was about the Borg. Did you ever hear, hear of it? This is a, that was Star Trek, right? The Borg was kind of like a boxy craft flying through space, and the Borg will assimilate you. And if it does, you know, you got all these really big implants, and you look bruised and everything else. And, but, but you will be assimilated. That was the line, right? And at the, at the time, we also had Microsoft was growing, if you remember. It was basically, you will be assimilated. Microsoft will own you eventually. And guess what? That's, both of these things actually seem to have happened. It's not exactly the way it was in the Star Trek TV series. However, Phaedo is next. Um, I'm following a particular series of, of how the readings would go in a typical textbook. You were to buy an $80 textbook. The Phaedo is the scene that was laughingly depicted by Steve Martin in the little video. Uh, but this is the death of Socrates. So it's when all the different friends are gathered around. By the way, Plato was not one of them for some reason. He 
wasn't there. Um, and Plato wasn't the one that handed Socrates the cup of hemlock and said, here's your hemlock. And he didn't just drink it down. In fact, he was hoping to like dump some of it. Says, can we do a libation? Which, you know, what you know, when you have a cup of wine, you know, a libation to the gods as you pour some on the ground. You know, that would but no, 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 we only made enough to do the job, so you have to have to drink the whole thing. Um, and it doesn't take very long. Uh, but before they get to that point, we have his wife and children are taken away because they've been there visiting last time. Um, and his friends all get into an argument over death, right? And this is where the argument about the soul having no parts. It's invisible. So I love asking people, like, do we even have souls today? Do you, have you grown up feeling like you have a soul? What is your soul? What do you think of as your soul? I think so. Well, you know, do trees have souls? We'll go a little further back and we'll, we'll go to Aristotle. And for Aristotle, the, the, thing, the thing about Plato is the soul has no part, so it's invisible, but it's your consciousness, I think, right? And as a result, what you're, you're experiencing that you think of as yourself is essentially being called your soul. In Greek, suche is soul, uh, and suche is the bait is the word where we get psychology so so if you're studying psychology it's the study of the soul that's what psychology means in Greek right um, and for for Plato the soul is not a physical thing we'll get into that as we start talking about uh, the Republic and the nature of idealism for Plato But Aristotle comes along, he's Plato's student, and he disagrees with the idealism of Plato, and he argues that your soul is the activity of the body. That's pretty different. That's, that's very different, right? In other words, instead of the soul being an invisible, you know, not physical thing, uh, instead, the soul for Aristotle is the activity of the body. So as I, I do things, whatever my body does, the doing of those things is my soul. So trees, do they have a soul? The answer is yes for Aristotle. There is an activity in trees. Uh, uh, he does study trees and he does uh, uh, study plants and all sorts of things. He's like the father of botany and the father of zoology and the fa father of all these different ologies uh, because he's the one that uses categorical reasoning and starts building kind of an encyclopedia of what everything is. Right? Plato is trying to figure out what are definitions. That's, that's where the muse learns to write. You know, now, now that we're writing in prose, we're also asking questions like, what are the definitions of all these words that we're talking about? What is justice? What is love? What is friendship? You know, all these things. And people sitting around in the dialogues uh, talking about what they think it is, what they think it is, and then Socrates typically is the one who figures out what's wrong with that definition, what's wrong with that definition, and they keep zeroing in on a better and better definition. Sometimes uh, they don't come to a conclusion. And but I, I mentioned that there are three Platonic periods, so-called, generally uh, agreed on. The first period, Plato is the one who's writing about Socrates. Socrates doesn't write, right? So it's all Plato. Uh, there are others that also write about Socrates, but Plato is the main one. And as Socrates is writing about Plato, the initial dialogues, the ones that are called the early dialogues, seem to really describe this asshole that everybody hated, except for his close friends, 
right? Uh, because he would ask questions of the people that were held in esteem, high esteem among the town. Uh, remember, he, he you know, heard uh, Chirophon come back and say that the god had said no one is wiser, and he didn't believe it. So he went out and he started trying to find somebody wiser. And what he found out was that nobody's wiser. Of course, this is why people get mad at him because they, he makes them look like fools. And concludes as, as 